Hey everybody, it is patch note day and the May update patch notes are here. The May update is called Galloping Seahorse, which sounds pretty cool to me. And the maintenance times are your normal maintenance times that you have been used to. And let's see, it says here, Captains, welcome to the new update. It brings a significant batch of content, including a very special feature. Let's check all that out. But if you can't be bothered to read such a long text, no problem. We have the TLDR for you in here. Right here is a brief table of contents of what is included in this next campaign. It will be pan-European destroyers arrive in early access with two new commanders. I think one of those commanders will be Conrad Hilfrich. I see him down here. And then we have back to a Belfast campaign with the British Tier 7 Premium Cruiser Belfast 43 as the ultimate prize. And anybody like me that recently obtained the Belfast in the Petty Day event are probably going to be interested in what the differences are between the Tier 6 Belfast, which is an awesome cruiser that uh, I use in open water with no problem. So it will be interesting to see the difference between that Tier 6 Belfast and this Belfast 43. I'll also be interested to see if there's any confusion about that. So. The premium collaboration content, including Azure Lane, returns for a limited time. So there have been a lot of people asking about uh, the availability of Azure Lane commanders and uh, items. So this is going to be your opportunity here. So choose wisely. And then the pilot version of the auction with exclusive goods to obtain. Uh-oh. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what the auction is. People are already complaining about loot crates. So we'll, uh, we'll have to take a look at that. And there are three arena seasons and more, of course. But here, this looks like uh, a redeemer code up here. And before they continue, they want to give you this redeemer code at the normal redeemer code link right here. This information will be down below in the detailed information for this video. And okay, so pan European destroyers in early access and sweet comebacks. A whole new branch of pan European destroyers arrives in Legends, now available in early access. It consists of six new destroyers and one cruiser, and the cruiser is always a uh, tier. Tier 1 ship is generally always the cruiser, so that's what we kind of have down here in the picture. I wanted to make sure that's why I was pausing there. Both the Tier 1 Griff and the Tier 2 Romulus are unlockable for credits, while the Tier 7 uh, Osterlogand is going to reinforce the destroyer ranks with the start of the next update. So you won't be able to get the Tier 7 ship. You can see it is locked right there. But everything else is available in early access. But you can get the Griff and the Romulus right off the bat. You don't have to wait for early access for those is what it looks like. These destroyers don't need smoke generators and they rely instead on speed and powerful armaments as well as the repair party consumable at higher tiers. So, okay, just like the French destroyers, many of the French destroyers, I think all of them except the Agile, uh, do not have smoke. These apparently will not have smoke, so it should be an interesting challenge. To get the new ships, acquire some pan-European destroyer crates, including the big ones. And the big ones, being subject to the guarantee system, also bring back a pan-European Navy staple, the Tier 7 Friesland. And a lot of people have been asking about the Friesland, and here it is, with her rapid fire gunboat style ready for you to try out and I believe it's like sub two second firing uh, speed on the main gun so the ship really is awesome she is going to be obtainable for global XP but that's not the only comeback we're preparing for the black Swia is going to be available to acquire as well well okay so there you go All right so here's some information about the guarantee system and in this case you'll get an early access ship tiers three through six at least in every 20th crate and that would be a pan-european destroyer big crate that is open 
and the threshold for the Friesland is 30 containers. So if you've opened 30 crates and haven't gotten any ships, uh, you may be able to get the Friesland uh, essentially, not really free because you do have to buy the crates or obtain them in certain ways, which they may be available in the campaign coming up here. I think that has happened before. So we'll have to see how this shakes out. But all right, so that is uh, information about the guarantee system. And one more pan-European destroyer to get is the all-new premium Oland of Tier 6, starting on May 23. So you got to wait a little while, it looks like. To learn more about her, proceed to the new ships of the update section and watch out for another deep dive within a Through the Spyglass article, which will arrive in the coming weeks. All right, so there you go on that. And more good news, there are two new commanders, Conrad Hilfrich, who a lot of people have seen in the past, who was stealthily added to the officer ranks in the last update. I, <laughs> you have to wonder how many people bought the Orkin thinking they were going to get um, Swirsky and ended up getting Hilfrich instead. That would be a, a nasty surprise if you weren't paying attention uh, well enough there. And the other commander is Stig Hansen Eriksson. Huh, kind of sounds like Sig Hansen from uh, uh, Deadliest Catch fame. Okay, so Stig Hansen Eriksson, and they're going to be joining Jersey Swirsky hiding inside a commander crate. Each of the Tier 3 Pan-European commanders is also obtainable for 900,000 Commander XP in the store. So for the first time, you'll be able to buy Jersey Swirsky outright for 900,000. 100,000 Commander XP. So that is a welcome sight, especially for people who were disappointed that they bought the Orkin expecting Swirsky and got Hilfrich instead. And okay, so Conrad Hilfrich is your universal pan-European commander, which means you're going to get him as soon as you acquire your first such ship. So any pan-European ship you get, if you don't have any commanders, you will get Conrad Hilfrich. And it says, be it either the Tier 1 Griff or any of the early access destroyers, so you don't have to buy Conrad Hilfrich. All you have to do is unlock the Griff and you will get the Commander, apparently. So uh, don't buy him in the store uh, when you could get him for just a couple of credits in the, um, in the pan-European ship line there by uh, opening up the Tier 1 Griff. Yeah, or you might have him already. There you go. Okay, so... Next up is Stig Hansen Eriksson. Some say his torpedoes defy physics. Others claim he's never set a smokescreen in his life. All we know is he's named the Stig Hansen Eriksson, and that looks to be on play, uh, a play on the Stig of Top Gear fame. All right, that's a big time European program. There's a version in America, but I think I like the British version better. To learn everything about the new ships and commanders, stay tuned. We'll cover the matter next week in a featured article. So there will be a lot of articles coming out about these different items. And back to Belfast is the campaign apparently. And the Belfast 43 is the tier seven version of a cruiser you know and love with AP and HE shells and close to American ballistics. But she's now equipped with two triple tube torpedo launchers. She also has an enviable consumable kit of smokescreen generator, radar, and sonar available at the same time. So, all right, it looks like it will be an upgrade to the Belfast. So I was asking about the differences between the two ships. And here you go. This, uh, If this is exactly like the previous Belfast from the St. Paddy's Day event with the quick reloading guns, this will be awesome. Because really, uh, there were a lot of times I was in a battle with that ship and I was kind of looking for torpedoes. And, well, here you go. To learn more about this ship, stay tuned for a dedicated issue of the Through the Spyglass blog section set to go out next week. The framework of the campaign is probably familiar to you. 100 milestones in five weeks with a catch-up mechanic enabled. And if you're up to the challenge, there's also a weekly set of hard mode assignments let's proceed to the prize list so here is what you can get without admiralty backing these are the boards you get 60 common boosters 
12, type 1, type 2, and type 3 camouflages each. Eight European camouflages. Uh, I guess that's a new new one. I don't really know what those are. 262,000 commander XP, 900,000 credits, 8,000 global XP, 14 promotion orders and insignia commendation, eight days premium account, nine pan-European destroyer crates, one pan-European destroyer big crate, a British commander crate, a background patch and a patch symbol. All right, so the value of these rewards without Admiralty backing is over 17,000 doubloons. So that is probably, well, it's over $60 is what it looks like they're valuing that with. And with Admiralty backing for 2,500 doubloons or around $10, you get an additional 60 rare boosters, 20 additional each of the type 1, type 2, and type 3 camouflages, as well as 21 more additional European camouflages, 137,500 Commander XP, 2,310,000 credits, 27,500 Global XP, 26 more promotion orders, 3 more insignias, 3 commendations, 750 doubloons, that'd be uh, $3 right there, 6 more Pan-European Destroyer crates, and 4 more Pan-European Destroyer big crates, and of course the British Tier 7 Cruiser Belfast 43, and I think the Belfast 43 is modeled after the historical Belfast Cruiser from World War II, if what I read about that is correct, I, I'm assuming it was. The total value of the rewards with Admiralty backing is 71,530 doubloons and a 10,000 doubloons equal $40. That is a little over $280 worth of items there is what they value that at. And as the campaign contains 100 milestones, if you wish to get everything right away, it will require 27,000 250 doubloons. That is a little bit more than $100. That's about $110 is what that will be. The full breakdown of the campaign missions will be available on Monday, May 16 as a standalone blog post. So there you go on that. And okay, Azure Lane, Godzilla and Kong are back at it. And I got to tell you that I use Godzilla as my Japanese battleship commander, even though he has a spotter plane uh, base trait. I, I still like the uh, voiceover on Godzilla, so I definitely recommend Godzilla if you can all make that possible. But let's read on about this. Rejoice, Captains, Azure Lane collaboration event, as well as the Godzilla vs. Kong collaboration range, will become available once again. Both content sets come back in full except for the Azure Lane Otago. Azure Lane, the Azure Lane collection is headlined by the likes of Baltimore, Queen Elizabeth, Graf Spee, and others. Godzilla and Kong items are available until June 6, while you'll be able to get your hands on the Azure Lane goods from May 30th through June 20th. So the Kong and Godzilla is a very limited time that it will be available. All right, next up is the auction, it looks like. So this looks kind of interesting. It says here the initial version of the new feature is here. It works this way. Make your bid for a lot with a finite number of valuable items within each available and either win and get the goods or get your bid refunded if you lose. For now, the bids might be placed with doubloons and credits depending on the exact lot. This update, uh, the auction will be active from June 2 to June 6. So it'll be interesting to see what this uh, is exactly. So, um, hey, I guess you can look forward to a brief video on that when it becomes available just because of the curiosity of what that's all about. So I think that'd be a popular video. So I'll say right now, I'll plan to probably do a video on that. So. Please help us test it as we are eagerly waiting for your feedback. Make sure to check our blog, a dedicated article on the auction, including the full rules 
in exclusive lots that are going to be available this time is coming soon. All right, next up is Arena, and there are three new seasons. It makes a thunderous comeback for the new update with three seasons available over its course. The arms race bonuses are back too, except the one that restores HP, just like you asked. Okay, someone asked that they exclude the uh, bonus that uh, restores HP. I think that was the one I kind of liked. Okay, anyway, uh, other than that, no changes and no carriers. And buckle up and show who's boss. More information is coming your way in a special article breaking down everything you would want to know about the arena seasons as soon as next week. All right, so there will be a lot of uh, blog posts about all this information. New ships of the update, uh, Japanese Tier 4 Premium Battleship Miyagi, and is based on Project B-40 precursor design of the Congo class. Six powerful 14-inch guns with two of the turrets placed at the rear make Miyagi a tough fight for all comers. She is also pretty quick and sports respectable AA and secondary outfits for her tier. All right, will be interesting to check that out. Then here is a pan-European tier six premium destroyer Olan that they talked about previously. And the lead ship of her class with four destroyers planned to be built, Olan was constructed with the lessons of the World War II naval battles in mind. Becoming the biggest destroyer of the Swedish Navy, she and her sister ship were in service up until 1979. A quick shot with strong AA defenses bolstered by defensive AA fire, this pan-European destroyer is no slouch. Add to that the repair party and powerful torpedoes and you have a top contender, but beware, there is no smoke generator. So, yep, none of these pan-European ships it looks like we'll have smoke generators okay so here's it for the balance changes and it looks like there are no balance changes coming this time but here is a link to their dev blog which will have some upcoming balance changes right here i will probably have this link in the detailed information down below however a sufficiently big surprise is lying in wait for you stay tuned and that could be the uh long-awaited Veemer balance change uh, going to tier 7. So, all right. And then there's a store update. Skins and permanent camouflages, same as voiceovers for commanders and commander guises, can now be previewed in the store before you make the purchase. Some minor interface tweaks to smoothen the experience were added as well. So it'll be interesting to check and see what that is really about see how, how well you can hold the oh i guess you can play the voiceover and like all these guys i know they have more than like one one voiceover so there could be 20 or 30 voiceovers for each of these guys so it'll be interesting to see whether this is a brief snippet for each guy or the complete uh deal with each guy where they're talking about all sorts of stuff throughout the course of a match it's it's probably one brief little snippet like pulling the cord on a uh, on a talking doll all right, and here are the bug changes. It looks like uh, ship models had a problem uh, with low polygon versions when they would reconnect after a disconnect. And then when navigating between bureau project segments, the controller bumper buttons going back could result in wrong segment being focused on and navigating back to the project overview. All right, collision warning indicator alerting with a delay. That's probably uh, good to fix that one. Pedor Bagration's Barrett layout in the armor viewer was incorrect. All right, Flint now correctly takes all range modifiers into account. For a few months, she used to be hard limited to 16.3 kilometers due to an error. So that has been fixed. A rare case of aiming reticles disappearing at the beginning of battles when player use the overview camera and tactical map during the uh, countdown. All right. And then here's a bunch of mobile items, a status bar with the phone charge and time indicator sometimes not disappearing. And uh, let me see here. I don't really see anything. Uh, all right. And then other 
wow, there's a lot here under other. Maybe that's why they don't have any balance changes. They're busy fixing a bug fixes here and added ray trace shadows for PlayStation 5, which can be enabled in the game. Oh, okay. This feature requires a 4K resolution to be turned on. Colored shell tracers can now be turned off by switching the decorative parameter of customization settings. New sonar icon icon when opposing ships are using sonar from behind a hill or island you'll see a corresponding icon which means you can now effectively distinguish between sonar and radar detection that is good because well there were a lot of battles i could tell it was sonar because um these ships that were near me uh, did not have radar and they would only have sonar so but it's good that you now have an icon to distinguish between the old radar uh, icon so it'll be interesting to see what that is special type of challenge for newer players demo battles is available starting may 30th the terms are the following you can play up to two games with the types of ships destroyers cruisers battleships and aircraft carriers that you haven't played more than once yet the opponents are only ai and with such a safe way of trying new stuff your boosters and camos do not get spent, but you will still get your XP, except it's only 20% of what you would get if you were playing standard modes. So I wonder, yeah, maybe this um, helps out your, your win percentage or something like that. But okay, so there's a, a new demo mode. Uh, ship markers are improved. Out of range markers are now half transparent for both main battery and torpedoes. Aircraft carriers and their squadrons markers are always non-transparent and the same goes for every marker in spectator mode and focused markers. The big HP bar of focused markers now blinks after receiving damage. The small, uh, a small HP bar was added for unfocused markers. All right, well, I guess we'll have to check all that out and see what that is. Sounds pretty interesting. With this update, we introduce two new ship traits. American Tier 6 Premium Destroyer Kid is swapping Nimble Aim for the Heal Consumable. Okay, I think I like the Heal Consumable on the Kid, so I guess I'll have to see what that actually is before I comment on it. And the second one is Slow Torpedoes, which is going to be used with upcoming ships. Okay, that's another interesting one. And Mobile... Divisions are now available and not just with other mobile players. Play with your friends on the go. Prepare for summer and turn the tide. All right, well, that's it for the Galloping Seahorse May update. This is the Jaguar, and I'll see you on the high seas. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe if you like it.